Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, my name is Chelsea Mann. I'm a field education trainer with Wella Professional. I'm uh, coming to you live from my studio in my house um, in St. Albert, and I'm so excited to be here with you guys for today's live. I've been preparing so much, and I've been so excited about this live because today we're going to talk about 90s hair. Um, we're going to talk about 90s inspired hair. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff 90s related. So again, my name is Chelsea Mann. I'm with Wella Professional and I'm really excited to be uh, with you guys today. Thanks for taking the time. Um, so, and thanks to Wella Canada West for having me. Um, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping, guys. I'm gonna do my best. I am on my own today. I don't have a co-host today. So I'm gonna do my best to um, answer whatever questions come up in the comments. I know a few of my colleagues are in the comments as well. Uh, so feel free to fire any questions in the comments, but uh, even better if you guys wanted to put your questions into the question cards. There's a, a thing right here that has a question mark on it. Um, pretty self-explanatory, I think. Click on it, type your question in there, and I will answer them live as we go. Um, so yeah, let's get started with 90s hair. Uh, so first of all, I wanted to talk about, I've got a bunch of mannequins to show you guys today. I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit of sort of a technique that I created for this this live. Um, but first I want to talk about 90s hair and what is 90s hair? I, I, I imagine that you guys have seen a lot of sort of inspiration come in from your clients about uh, with 90s hair. I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of pictures coming in, um, you know, of Kylie Jenner's hair and uh, Gwen Stefani just put out something really 90s inspired just the other day. We're going to talk about her today too. Uh, but I know my own clients have been bringing in a lot of pictures of stuff that I certainly see from the 90s. Things that I've admittedly, as a colorist, were sort of resistant to at the beginning. Things like chunky highlights. That word for me is very like, it feels dirty almost, that chunky word. I don't know if you guys also feel that way, but um, it doesn't, uh, it's not something that I would sort of come to organically. But uh, to see that uh, kind of coming back has is, is kind of been nice. But what I'm seeing with the with the 90s hair trend, guys, is that we're not copy and pasting um, things from the 90s. We're really modernizing the inspiration that we're getting from some of the trends we saw in the 90s um, and making them our own again. You know, it's just, you know, like, you know, my dad always says, what's old is new again, right? Um, so I think it's important to to know that, first of all, is that, you know, we're taking our inspiration from the 90s, but not necessarily copying and pasting things that we we saw then because sometimes what's old is old. Am I right? So uh, make sure that we're taking that inspiration as inspiration, okay? Um, now, the other thing that I wanna make sure you guys know today too is I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of some inspiration and then some ways that they inspired me to, to the, the, the pictures uh, inspired me to create uh, 90s inspired looks, okay? Now, I think too, uh, if we talk about why 90s hair, why now, you know, I remember going to clubs with my girlfriends uh you know i used to go to a club that i don't even think is there anymore called kingdom uh in burlington ontario and me and my friends used to go and uh it was great they had a you know a one big room where you you know had all the sort of popular music going and then the next room over was the retro room and it was all like 70s and 80s music i don't think that club's there anymore but i think that if it were that retro room would now be playing music from the early 90s and from you know maybe even the early 2000s right so i think this idea of what's old is new again um i think we see a lot in hairdressing i think we you know i when we first started teaching balayage several years ago i had a lot of young stylists say to me like oh this new thing is so cool i'm like but we were doing balayage, you know, 20 years ago, um, and now it's sort of new again. It's having a, it's going through a reinvention, right? Um, so I think that there's, it's just sort of time for the 90s hair trend. I also think that we live in a culture now when it comes to beauty that we rely a lot on bloggers and, uh, you know, uh, Instagram influencers, and now my personal favorite, uh, TikTok. Uh, we live in this sort of TikTok culture where we're seeing these sort of moment to moment um, in real time trends sort of come to life and, and die. It's not like it used to be where we have, 
overarching trends that last us a year or two years or even a season anymore. You know, we see Kylie Jenner do something on Instagram when it's around for a couple of weeks and then it goes. Now, something like an, a 90s hair trend, uh, we're seeing that inspiration a lot and we've been seeing it for the better part of a year now uh, and more and more sort of come to life. So I think the 90s hair trend is here to stay. But with the new ways that we get our inspiration from Instagram, from TikTok, from bloggers and vloggers, I was on vacation uh, before COVID. Uh, I was overseas and my entire itinerary came from a blogger that I followed online. Uh, and I ended up sort of identifying with some of the things that she had done. And I printed out her itinerary and followed it almost day by day. Uh, so, you know, getting that sort of inspiration for travel or for the way that we decorate our homes or the way we're doing our hair and makeup, I think is very common and it is, it kind of creates a space where we can really see those older trends come back to life. Okay. Um, so I, I want to start with, before I get to the mannequins, I also want to start with, um, something that I found online when I was preparing for this live. Uh, I found an article by a popular, uh, magazine, a popular fashion magazine, um, that was from a couple of years ago, admittedly, I think it was from 2015. Um, and it talked about, um, ugly nineties hair trends that we can't wait to sort of be without. And I thought, Hmm, that's interesting. So I, I went with it and I'll tell you what I found is quite interesting. So the first picture they showed is this one. Okay. So this is our girl, Sarah Jessica Parker with her, you know, what I imagine is, you know, natural curls. Maybe it's a perm, who knows? But I think that if this was an interactive class, if you guys could sort of talk back to me, I think that we would all agree that that's a curtain fringe, right? And maybe it's an older sort of interpretation of one. Maybe it's not blended the way we would do it now. Uh, you know, maybe it's, it doesn't have the, maybe we would shorten up that length now, you know? Um, and we certainly maybe wouldn't do a straightened curtain fringe with a, a curly base. Um, but this article in 2015 talked about these ugly hair trends when really now we're seeing that we've already seen that curtain fringe sort of come back. And this one talked about how the ugly 90s trend that they don't want to see come back in 2015 was the scrunchie. And I'll tell you, if I ran um, upstairs right now, I could, you know, have a handful of scrunchies come down, right? Um, so I, it's, it's just funny to see that progression. So the second one in the article was this. Okay, so uh, this is uh, Kirsten Dunst. Now you can't see it in this photo. She was very popular in the 90s, lots of movies. Um, in this photo, you can't see it because it's behind my picture there, I just realized, but uh, she's got a butterfly clip in her hair. Again, maybe sort of an ugly thing from 2015, um, but I don't know about you guys, but I've been buying all kinds of clips for the, maybe the last year or so for when I wear my hair up. Maybe not a butterfly sort of jaw clip like we saw in the 90s, but where I have some pearl encrusted clips and some jewel tone clips and the ones that we see people like Cardi B um, and Dua Lipa wear a lot that have words on them that we put in our hair. So maybe not a butterfly clip, but again, we're modernizing this trend. Okay, so the next photo that they had was this one. Okay, and I believe this is Tia Carrere, um, circa Wayne's World days. Um, and her hair is crimped, right? This is the obvious one. And the crimping sort of comes from the 70s and 80s, right? Um, and again, this article in 2015 is saying, we're never going to see these things come back when, you know, anybody I know, we've got Emily Baker in the comments here right now. And I know that Emily Baker does some root crimping in a, uh, in an updo or to create volume, right? So my point guys is don't discount these, these things. They're still sort of relevant as long as we're willing to modernize them, right? Next, we've got this one. This is Gwyneth Paltrow looking a little morose, I will admit. Um, but the, uh, the headline on this one was about the half bun. Now, again, maybe I'm not going to do a half bun exactly like this in my own hair now, but I certainly bust out the odd top knot maybe when I haven't washed my hair for a couple of days. Maybe if I'm just running to Costco or whatever it might be, right? So maybe not a half bun like this, like we did in the 90s, uh, but although I really would love to uh, own one of those, what looks like a satin blazer. <laughs> it looks pretty awesome. Um, but again, what's old is new again, right? Oh, you guys are gonna love this one. Alicia Silverstone. <laughs> okay. This one was about the twists, right? Maybe we're not, oh, this, you know, ugly 90s thing, we're not gonna do twists anymore. 
But are we though? Anybody who's done an updo in the last, I know we, you know, we sort of missed out on wedding season this year, but anybody who's done an updo in the last uh, six months or so has certainly twisted part of it, maybe pulled it apart. Maybe it's been in the back. Maybe we're not going to do the rows of twists anymore. You know what I mean? But I'll tell you, this was my everyday look with the butterflies and the twisted clips. And I would cry if it wasn't perfectly straight. And then I had sort of the bump in the back. You know, I thought about putting pictures of myself in this and then decided to spare myself the embarrassment. But anybody who's, you know, in my age bracket knows how to do this, right? And again, guys, it's not to say that we're not doing these things anymore. We're just doing them in a more modern way, okay? There's my girl, Gwen Stefani. Now this one that they, in the article uh, from 2015, they talked about <laughs> the butterfly clips. I'm telling you, I know. In this one in the article, they talked about raver knots, right? Now we have lots of different names for these things. Gwen Stefani in the 90s was the queen of these sorts of, uh, you know, knotted looks um, on the top there. Again, guys, am I going to walk around with my hair knotted like this? No, but if we were doing Coachella or if we were doing Burning Man or if we were doing any of those big festivals, we're certainly seeing space buttons. We're certainly seeing uh, top knots and things like that, especially in colored hair and throw in some, uh, some butterfly clips and you're on your way, right? Maybe throw some twists in there too. My point guys is that this stuff is still, while we may not do it exactly like this, it's still relevant, okay? Topanga. I don't know what this girl's actual name is. Maybe somebody throw it up into the comments. I can't remember. She'll always be Topanga to me and anybody that lived through the 90s. Um, but the hair jewelry, this is what this one's about. Now, these ones here you guys can see in the picture. I used to have these. They're like gems and they have a spring sort of circle, a spirally piece on the bottom. And we used to twist or braid our hair up and put the gem part in and twist it into the, the, the braided or the twisted sort of cornrow thing we had. And this was the fashion and we had the pieces sticking out in the back. And, you know, to be honest with you guys, I'm actually really jazzed that I'm not doing this to my hair anymore. But we had a collection with Sebastian a few years ago where we were doing all kinds of hair jewelry. We were sewing, uh, you know, we were sewing leather strapping into hair. We were doing feathers. I had a girl do staples. I saw somebody put earrings into hair and zippers and all kinds of fun stuff, right? So again, maybe we're not going to do it exactly like this, but I'll tell you, I wish I still had those jeweled clips. Um, three more of these guys. So this one here is still going to be relevant today. This is Christina Aguilera in her, during her, the release of her Dirty album. Now we're going to talk a little bit about this chunky highlight thing. I've got some mannequins to show you and a new way that we're doing this, right? So while again, we may not do it exactly like this now, we're going to combine some of the modern techniques that we have to our, you know, at our disposal to recreate these looks um, you know, in more modern ways. You got to remember guys too, that, uh, Christina Aguilera is around the same age as me. So no shame. I'm nearly 40. And, um, for me, I'm somebody now as a consumer who, uh, you know, I've moved past a, a point in my life where I'm, uh, you know, I don't have money to spend on beauty, things like that. So women in my demographic or people in my demographic, really, you know, now have moved into the um, career being, you know, having solid careers and, you know, settling into having a little bit more disposable income. Uh, and we remember fondly looks like this, even though now younger generations of stylists would think that this, you know, maybe isn't so trendy anymore. I look at this and I think, oh, and I remember all of the great times I had when my hair looked like that right? So if a stylist could say to me, I can bring this to you um, in a more modern way and bring you back there, there's a certain amount of nostalgia there that's very powerful, right? Uh, two more. So <laughs> wouldn't be the 90s without Mary Kate and Ashley. So this one is about the flip. Okay. So again, we're not, I'm not telling you guys to, uh, you know, cut bobs and start flipping them out. Please, Jesus, let's not have that come back. Okay. Or whatever high, please universe, whatever power you believe in. Let's not have this come back. I remember standing in front of my mirror and, uh, you know, short hair in the back and trying to take the round brush and blow dryer. And, you know, you'd finish it like, it would be spiked up in the back and you'd look like you dried it with it against a wall. You know what I mean? Uh, and it was horrible and let's not go back there. But anybody who's doing sort of more modern trendy haircuts right now is doing a lot of shags, right? 
Uh, so again, we're bringing sort of not necessarily that flippy look the way we see in this photo, but we're certainly doing, um, you know, some shags and some things that are going to create that sort of shape, right? Last but not least, it wouldn't be the 90s uh, without this lady, Madonna. So this one is about the bandana, okay? So of course we're not, I remember having, uh, you know, bandanas that were cut in half that weren't squares, they were triangles and they had ribbons on the end. And we used to put them in our hair and tie them on the back. And then sometimes you had to clip it in if you didn't have a pronounced occipital bone because it would slip all the time. And God forbid you lost your favorite one. It was a whole thing. But, you know, maybe we're not wearing bandanas, you know, in our hair like this anymore. Um, but I mean, there's still a pinup culture with hair that's alive and well that are, you know, those, those ladies will always wear bandanas in their hair. Um, but I, I would say that if we were to maybe use it as a headband or even better, I have some scrunchies in my sort of scrunchie collection that have ribbons and things off of them that would sort of maybe modernize a look like this more than anything. I think right now we're wearing bandanas on our faces, but nineties Madonna style, right? Okay. So I hope you guys are getting sort of that. My point is that this, I thought this article was quite interesting that it came out in 2015 and they're saying, Oh, you know, we hope these looks never come back and no, they never came back in that way. Uh, but they've certainly, the inspiration from those looks is certainly still there. Okay. Um, I don't see any questions in my question cards yet. Um, and that's good. So I'm going to, well, I mean, you guys can ask whatever questions you want. I'll answer them. Um, but I'm going to show you guys my first mannequin. So when I started researching this live and started thinking about what I wanted to do for it, um, I decided to maybe pull a few big looks from the nineties and re and recreate them and modernize them. Okay. So the first one is the pink hair trend. This is Drew Barrymore, obviously very popular sort of it girl in the nineties with her pink hair. Um, even better though, I would say that the goddess of pink hair in the nineties was this lady was Gwen Stefani. Okay. Um, so how do we bring that pink hair back to life? How do we modernize it? Um, and sort of make it new again, right? We, again, we don't want to copy those looks but we certainly want to, to bring these trends back and they're already back guys. You guys are already going to have people coming in and asking for them if you're not already. Okay. So this is my pink haired mannequin. This is the before shot. Okay. So I'm going to bring her a bit closer so you guys can see her. Okay. This is what her hair looked like when we started. I hope you guys can see. And if you can't, please let me know. This is what her hair looked like when I started. Okay. So it's just, it had been previously colored for another class that I did, okay? Um, and it's just sort of a, a dusty pink. So maybe this is a client who, you know, um, remembers fondly the 90s and maybe sort of modern has already modernized her pink hair color, um, but it's fading. We could even do this with a blonde, things like this, okay? So this is where we started, okay? What I did with this mannequin before I show you the finish is I decided to update the tone. So I took all of these uh, sort of warmer, more rosy pink tones and I've toned them to something a little bit more contrasting. You'll see when I show you the finish, um, I toned them with something a little bit more contrasting. Um, I believe I have to get my notes there over there. It's the one thing I forgot. So I'm going to do this on the fly. I believe the toner I used um, on these was just your simple Color Touch 916, one part color to two parts developer. And then what I did was I took a section on the other side, again, I'll show you in a moment, that runs sort of from uh, about maybe two inches off the hairline, two, two and a half inches off the hairline. And I just traced around the hairline, okay? So you guys can see there that my sections were sort of top of the ear is about there. And then I sectioned all the way down to the back. Okay, so all the way down to the nape and I'm about two, two and a half inches off of the hairline all the way, sort of a semicircle shape following the shape of the hairline. And then this underneath here is going to be a brighter pink. And then I toned this stuff down to create that contrast, right? So the finish of this guys is quite impactful. And I wanted to show showcase something curly because all of the other mannequin heads are uh, are straighter and smoother okay but the finish on this one guys looks like this okay so you've got that nice bright pink sort of money piece inspired but 90s inspired still colored piece but i love that it's got this underneath in the back as well 
okay? Uh, that's one thing I remember years ago when I, 20 plus years ago when I started doing hair, one of my first victims slash clients, you guys know how it is, was my mother. And my mother used to say to me, don't forget the back, because my mom's always worn her hair short. So uh, hairdressers were always inclined to just put maybe some highlights in the front of her hair. Um, but I always found a way to maybe um, at the back or things like that, uh, after she essentially forced me to do so, I learned that you, we shouldn't neglect the back of somebody's hair, right? If you guys look at the sort of money piece that's done in my hair, it runs from here. But if I lift up this top part, you can see that there's some underneath as well, right? So I think that's a small attention to detail that's really important, okay? So a way to modernize pink hair is, first of all, maybe to keep that contrast. And we certainly see that in the photos that I showed you of Gwen Stefani. We see a little bit of contrast here. We see that nice bright blonde in the front and then the, the, the pink underneath, right? Um, so this is more of a modern interpretation uh, of that and kind of come to life with some curls. Um, all I did with this, guys, for uh, her set um, was I prepped the hair with a little bit of our beautiful Imi Extra Volume Mousse. Um, just gave it a quick uh, blowout and then I set it with our my favorite hairspray, uh, which is the Shaper Zero Gra Gravity from Sebastian. Uh, set it and she sat down here overnight. She spent the night down here. Um, and then I took it out and really guys, I brushed it out a little bit earlier, but to be honest with you, I wanted you guys to see me kind of move the curls around and sort of play with it. I know that this is more curl than some people are comfortable with, uh, but if you have somebody with natural curl, uh, whether it's tight curl or loose curl, it doesn't really matter. If you have somebody with curl in their hair, don't be afraid to bring these trends to life, okay? Curly haired girls, you know, deserve the trendy stuff too, okay? So that's my interpretation of, of the new pink hair. Now, I just wanted to tell you guys too, this toner here is, like I said, is our Color Touch 916. Um, and then this here in the front, guys, I was at a salon earlier this week and uh, at the owner's request, I did a, a relight sort of review and some hands-on with them. And it taught me how much I love relights. <laughs> Do you guys love relights? Like, I, I, am I out on my own here? Because I was teaching this class and we did just a quick little hands-on session with Color Touch Relights, which is our um, no level sort of acidic uh, color. In Color Touch, it's a really beautiful way to like refresh highlights and you know bring sort of color back to life. You can also use them as quick toners. They process anywhere from five to 20 minutes. You can look up all this information on our app. Um, but this is the Color Touch Relights, it's bright pink, is the Color Touch Relights uh, Stroke 5.6. And I was so inspired by that salon that I was at uh, that I decided to bring it to you guys today. So I hope you guys like it. I know it's a little sort of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde right now because it's sort of half and half for Instagram, but I wanted you guys to see how we can sort of make this happen, okay? Now talking about a little bit about um, the, uh, I forgot what I was gonna say, uh, about the modernization before too, and we were talking about shag haircuts. This would be really beautiful in a shag haircut, maybe something with a little bit of a free face framing layer um, and then a shaggier sort of layer that this hair, that this uh, client maybe could flip out or wear in a few different ways, uh, especially if they have curly hair, lots of versatility there, okay? So there's your pink hair girl, okay? Um, do we have any questions in the comments? I love relights too, yay! <laughs> um, I'm glad somebody other than me, because I just, um, yeah, it's like I re-fell in love with relights. Who knew? Um, okay, so next we're going to talk about probably one of the biggest trends that we see uh, inspired by 90s hair right now. Um, and we're seeing it on lots of celebrities. We're seeing it all over the place. And it's this. This is Dua Lipa, for those of you that don't know that. Um, and she, her, like, her hair is it's kind of like mine. I like to say it that way, that she copied me. Um, but mine's only done on one side. So if I part my hair down the middle, all the blondes on one side, right? She's got that big front stripe and I'll show you guys an example of this in a minute, but we see lots and lots and lots of celebrities doing this, um, their own interpretation of this right now. So that's Dua Lipa. Um, and there we've got, that's JLo and I'm going to show you this one in a second. There's Kylie Jenner with her front stripe and it wouldn't be beauty related if it weren't for Beyonce. Okay. So there's Beyonce and her front stripe. Now, what I love about Beyonce's front stripe is that you see it sort of underneath as well. Okay. Which I think is really, really important to remember those attentions to detail. Now, could you do a small like front stripe in the front and just have like that little piece of color? 
Absolutely. But if you're going to do those bigger sort of sections, I certainly encourage you to have some underneath as well. So let me show you an example. My first one is this one, okay? So this is a balayage technique that I did before COVID. <laughs> so she's waited a long time for her debut. Now this was done with a technique that we're, I'm gonna make you guys sort of wait to find out, but we're gonna release this technique um, in January, I think, of next year. So stay tuned. We're gonna bring some really beautiful balayage stuff to you guys. Um, but this was just a basic balayage. Now this one's not all that high contrasting. I'm gonna show you something lighter later. Um, but, and that's okay, but this is a scenario we see a lot in the salon, right? That we have this basic balayage and this client is really happy with her hair. Great. But let's say this client says, you know, I want something different because anybody that's been doing hair for a while will tell you that the biggest reason that, that clients change hairdressers is because they're bored because they haven't been offered something new in a long time. Maybe they're feeling neglected, right? So maybe this client comes in and says, oh, you know, I love my balayage. I love the way that you do my hair, but I would love something a little bit different. And you know, COVID, I've been inside a long time. And you know, this, all of these things that we hear from clients, right? I know as a colorist, I tend to overthink things. The client would say that to me and I'd be like, oh my God, the sky's the limit. What are, let's, what are all these crazy things that we can do? But really guys, if we don't have a lot of time in the salon, we're not double booking right now. A lot of salons aren't, uh, and we need to maximize our time. Maybe we keep it simple and just create something like this. Okay. So I did not lighten this, right? Uh, I shouldn't say that. I lightened it originally when I did this like last year when I did this balayage, but I just took the existing lightness that she had in the front, took our beautiful Color Fresh Create Infinite Orange and put it directly over top of the money piece that was already in the front. Now, if I turn her around a little bit here, you guys can see, I'm just going to grab my amazing YS Park styling comb. Um, you guys can see in the front here that I've still got a little bit of sort of the lightness that's, you know, a bit gold next to the orange. I really love to layer colors together like that it really helps the brighter colors pop. Okay. So that's a little back pocket one for you, but this is my interpretation of sort of just that little bit of a money piece that lit or that little bit of a front stripe, um, that will just give you a little bit of something right now for sectioning for this guys, I did the same thing as I did for the pink hair. All I did was trace the hairline with the, the, the edge of my comb. So I took the edge of my comb, but this time I was only about maybe three quarters of an inch in. Let me make sure you guys can see that. Three quarters of an inch in, and then I literally just traced the edges of her hairline. You guys can see I missed a little bit up there, but you guys can see that, I hope. Okay. And this one, guys, just went up to the ear. That's all. Did that on both sides. The Infinite Orange, our beautiful Color Fresh Create Infinite Orange Semi Permanent Fashion Shades went straight over top of the lightness that was already there. Bob's your uncle and you're done, right? So I want you guys to see that these trends on existing clients, I understand how this, the, the salon industry is working right now is very different than what we're used to. We don't have a lot of extra time. We need to be able to clean and do things between clients. But this is a really easy way to bring something new to a client that's only booked for a certain service, but maybe is craving something a little bit more. Really great for client retention, guys. Okay, so that's my first front strike. My second front stripe, I think is something that's a little bit more believable and something that's a little bit more user friendly for, uh, for our clients and for our style. It's a little bit more salon friendly. Okay. So this is actually a mannequin that I've used for a live before. This was an updo uh, for one of my first lives. Um, but this is, she's just a blonde. Think of your global blondes or think of your, um, you know, your clients that come in every six weeks and get, you know, lots of highlights and they're pretty solidly blonde, right? Again, that client saying to us, you know, I would, can we do a couple of different colors of blonde or, you know, blonde, I was really blonde for a long time. Blonde haired clients will say, I want something different, but I don't want to go shorter or darker. And then we're sitting there and our faces say, okay, okay. And our brains are saying, what? Like, it doesn't make any sense, right? So if we're talking about blondes, how can we maybe bring something different and trendy to a blonde that maybe has a little bit of nerves going, right? Now for this particular client, she asked me for a curtain fringe. So we already did that. Um, so I decided to do some tone on tone sort of front stripe in her curtain fringe and essentially the same sectioning you just saw tracing the hairline, but I made sure I went up nice and high in her fringe. I'll show you in a second to get lots of her fringe. Okay. Um, and then I just used our beautiful opalescent shades from our Illumina line to create that little bit of 
This is the Opalescence Copper Peach in the front here, very tone on tone, nothing that's too contrasting or sharp, nothing that's gonna make that client panic. You could also mix in a little bit of our Titanium Rose with this or a little bit um, of our Nine Stroke 4-3 would be really beautiful, uh, just to create that sort of tone on tone difference, right? So I'm gonna move her to the side here so you guys can see the contrast. It's very subtle, right? And I feel like my ring light's diluting me a little bit here. But you guys can see that shape that happens, but that we've got that little bit of copper sort of into that curtain fringe that's just slightly different than our base color, right? So again, don't be afraid to bring these trends to your clients in these subtle ways, right? I think a lot of people, a lot of times clients will see my hair, for example, and they'll say, oh, I love that, but... It's, I think it's a little bit too much, or sometimes it's pink, or sometimes it's whatever. And you know, they say, oh, that's a little bit too far for me. Don't be afraid to create this um, in a tone in tone way, or in a tone on tone way, excuse me, uh, for clients that maybe are a little bit nerva, okay? So that's my front stripe. I hope you guys like that one. Uh, the next one we're gonna talk about is the one that um, is kind of hard for me, I'll admit. It was a hard sell for me. Um, because I, I lived through the nineties. I was, you know, a club kid and, you know, I've been there and done that. I lived it. Right. So for me to bring back a chunky highlight really is like taking a bullet. You know what I mean? I remember when that Kelly Clarkson, um, album came out where she's on the cover with the blonde and the brown and the red and the blonde and the blonde, brown and the red and everybody and their brother brought that photo into the salon and I swear to God we by the end of the day I you couldn't look at anything straight because you couldn't see straight right so when this chunky highlight thing started to come back I was like I we got to figure out a way that we can make this new right so in the 90s the chunky highlight thing sort of looked like this there that's the album there's Kelly Clarkson right there you love that I'm pointing at it like I didn't know this photo was coming up um, so there is Kelly Clarkson and Lindsay Lohan, and I know I'm covering up Nicole Richie there a little bit. Jenny Garth, bottom left, I don't know who that is. So if somebody knows, feel free to jump in. Um, but these are the chunky highlights that we're used to. Now, some of these border into like early 2000s, things like that. That's okay. Um, but these are the chunky highlights that give hairstylists like me nightmares, right? So when it comes to new wave or modernized chunky highlights, that's where this comes in, okay? So this is JLo and a salon that I taught at um, um, last month was we were talking about the JLo glow. And now that's something that I say like every day, the JLo glow. So with the JLo glow, right? You could do this in traditional chunky highlights where we were taking sort of mohawk sections and just sort of back to back foils and you know making sure we were creating those sort of stripey looks on top, right? But how do we make this modern, right? We don't want to have a chunky highlight situation anymore that looks like that Kelly Clarkson photo. Love Kelly Clarkson. If she happens to watch this, I'm a huge fan. But we don't want to have hair like that anymore. And I venture to say she doesn't either. So how do we make it modern, right? So this is what I created for you guys for chunky highlights. Now, I only did one section of this because I'm actually going to show you guys a little bit of how I brought this to life, okay? So in this, um, we've got sort of ribbons of dark throughout and ribbons of light throughout, but we don't see that like, I hope you guys can see that. We don't see that harsh sort of, you know, light, dark, light, dark stripiness. We don't want to see that. So what I've done here, and I'm going to show you guys on the other side in a second. What I've done here is I've created sort of balayage pieces that are light and thick and heavy, but I've also taken... Um, a darker color and layered it in. And that's really the key guys is to making sure that we have our dark colors layered in. Okay. Cause otherwise you just end up with veils of blonde without the, without the dark pieces in there, you're not going to end up with those sort of threads of light that we see. And that, um, that really contrasting kind of look. Right. So I think that's where I would like to maybe position it for you guys is not chunky highlights but contrasting balayage. Trademark. Uh, so let me show you how this came to life, okay? Um, so first of all, for formulas, what we're going to use today is our Magma Stroke 8-9 Plus. Now this is our uh, pigmented lightener. It will lift and deposit in one step, okay? 8-9 Plus means that we have a dominant uh, pigment of 8, which is pearl or blue, and a secondary pigment that is cendre, which is part violet and part gray. Now the plus, okay, 
uh, just means that it's meant to be used on hair that has a little bit of a darker level uh, and not because it's going to lift better guys but because it has more pigment to control warmth as we lift okay so just remember with these guys they are lightener so we want to control our developer I made sure that I mix this with our Welloxin 10 ball and then it, for a low light, I'm just going to keep it simple and use our colored, our beautiful color touch five stroke zero, one part color, two parts, 1.9% or six ball. Okay. So really simply guys, I'm just going to do a couple highlights here to show you, um, sort of how that other side came to life. That contrasting highlight came to life. Hope you guys can see if you can't let me know. So I'm going to take my section down. Now, all I did here, guys, was I did a uh, classic quadrant. So bridge of the nose to nape of the neck. And then I did a radial section from the top of the ear to the top of the ear. Now we're still going to see this girl doesn't like to stay on here. So we're going to push her. There we go. We're still going to see here, guys, um, the techniques, the modern techniques that we're using to blend um, with the more aggressive techniques that are the more aggressive sort of finished look that we saw in the 90s. Right. So I'm going to take my section down my front section um and i'm going to take a diagonal section now a diagonal back section like this is really going to give us you guys can see that diagonal it's really going to give us the opportunity uh to blend okay now what i'm going to do here guys this is where it's going to get a little bit different what i'm going to do here is instead of taking this like we maybe normally would and giving it a traditional weave i'm going to zigzag this so i've got my metal end tail comb i know some people like the longer ones the shorter ones you do you i don't judge uh, but i'm going to take my metal end tail comb and i'm going to put it sort of onto the scalp right off of the hairline like literally i've got maybe 10 strands of hair off the, the hairline and then instead of weaving i'm going to give it a nice deep zigzag up and down right so now i've created a space here where i've got a zigzag a zigzag pattern right now this top part of this is going to be light and this bottom part is going to sort of be darker so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to back comb this now i like to use a traditional back combing comb i know not everybody has one of these but i do like these talk about 90s and old school vintage tools i like this one so we're going to give it a little back comb now when we're creating a back comb guys we're creating an opportunity for blending and an opportunity to sort of help ourselves with our blend okay so we're going to give it a little bit of a back comb notice i didn't go crazy you know, and create a big crazy thing. I got to comb out later. We don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, but we just want to create a little bit of an insurance policy for ourselves. Then I'm going to take my foil and I'm going to put it in. Now, if you have a board and you like to use boards, go for it. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use the side of her head. Um, and then I'm going to take my magma stroke eight, nine lightener, and I'm going to sort of create a line, right? You guys can see that. Okay, so now this line doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be sort of linear like that. It's in stripey. It's not. That's just where I want to saturate from. Okay, so I'm going to use my lightener to make sure that I'm saturating this section. And I'm, I apologize, I'm using my brush to make sure that I'm saturating this section and sort of moving it, uh, you know, apart. A lot of times I'll see hair, hairstylists who will um, you know, make sure that they put a lot of lightener on the outside, but they're not really moving their section around to see if it's fully saturated, right? So make sure that you're doing that, move that section around, make sure that that lightener really, really gets in there. And if you need to paint on more, don't be afraid to do that. There's, uh, there's nothing worse than doing a beautiful balayage and then starting to open up foils and go, darn it. I wish I would have taken the time to saturate that better. Okay. So now that we're saturated, I've got my beautiful free lights brush. If you guys haven't tried these, go out to your distributor and grab one. They're really, really great. Nice angle here for blending. And I'm going to, usually I would be, you know, sort of doing this. I'm going to turn my brush around and I'm going to paint up. Okay. Now we're not painting the back combing, but I just want to make sure that I'm really, really blending in that line that I created. Now, if you're somebody who gets nervous about having a line like that, that's fine. You can apply, you know, in more of a wispy fashion. I do these all the time and I'm very sort of comfortable with it. If you're not, that's okay. I don't judge you. My way is not better than yours. You do you. Uh, but I like to create that space where I know I'm saturating all the way down. So I'm just going to take my brush, make sure I'm holding onto my foil and back combing up. Okay. And you guys can see now that that line is nice and blended. Okay. I'm going to put my foil together. Okay. Now, instead of moving on to the next section this way, I'm going to take this foil and I'm going to clip it up. Okay. Now this leaves me, remember I said before, we need to underlay some dark here, right? So this leaves me with this section. Now, instinctively, you might want to color this entire section dark. 
I mean, it's not right or wrong, but it's not what I would do because we're trying to preserve the natural base here, right? So these points that we created here, when we zigzagged, I'm going to use these. So I'm going to take a little bit, maybe I'll still keep it off the hairline, but I'm going to take a little bit of that point and a little bit of this point and a little bit of that point. So you can see that I've still got some underneath. I've still got some up near the hairline. Maybe I'll leave a little bit more near that hairline. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this piece, guys. I'm going to get my back combing comb and I'm going to give it a little bit of something here, a little bit of insurance there. Okay. And then I'm going to put a dark foil. I'm going to layer a dark foil underneath it. Okay. I've got two foils here, of course. I'm going to layer a dark foil underneath it. Again, when we do beautiful full balayages like this, that's one of the biggest things that I see go wrong um, is that we are working on hair maybe that's already light or is already has already been balayaged and we really want to have that contrasting look, but we get so blonde focused and I, I've done this too, guys. It's not, I'm not immune, right? Um, we get so blonde focused that, and, and so focused on we need the lift and we need all of these things to happen uh, that we forget that we need to put some dark in there to create the contrast. The contrast doesn't just happen with the blonde. Okay, so I'm going to fold this foil up and now I've got a dark foil, right, contrasted with a light foil over top. Okay, so really guys, I'm going to do all my sections like that. I'm going to take another section, nice, big, deep zigzags, back comb, balayage, layer your dark underneath. Okay, and, and that's exactly what I did on this other side. And you're going to finish like that with those nice sort of chunky, and I wanted these ones to be a bit warmer sort of for the fall and the winter, but you guys can do this with any sort of shade palette you want. Um, but to create those nice sort of new age chunky highlights, we really need to have the dark to sort of to go along with it. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay, so now for my last mannequin head, um, I wanted to show you guys something that was inspired by the 90s, yes, um, but we're seeing done certainly a lot more now um, than we ever did in the 90s, and that is split hair, okay? I love, love, love this. Obviously, you can look at my own hair and see that I love this. I did almost this exact look on somebody not too long ago, and just I was so happy to be doing it. Uh, we certainly need to manage. If we're going to be doing looks like this that were certainly was inspired by the 90s, we went through a whole phase in the 90s of dark on top and blonde underneath or the opposite. Um, but if we're going to be doing the, a look like this on clients, we need to manage their expectations, right? So we need to make sure that a client knows, first of all, if they've never been blonde before, that a blonde like that really takes some maintenance, just like a fashion color does, guys. Don't discount your blondes. You really, they really, blondes like this really do require probably monthly toners, right? Um, and certainly your purple shampoo and those sorts of things, right? Um, but we need to make sure that they know what grow out looks like and what it looks like to have hair that close um, to their root area. Okay. So let me show you my interpretation of a half and half color. Now I did this one a couple of different ways to show you guys a couple of different things. Okay. So this is the first one. This is just, this is the back of her head. Okay. And I used one mannequin to show you guys this just to not be wasteful. Okay. Um, but this is essentially what we're seeing in the photo there. Okay. This is dark on top and blonde underneath. Okay. I did this all in one process, okay, where I put, I, to be completely honest with you, I started with a um, blonde mannequin, okay? So I put the dark in and I put sort of the toner in at the same time. So we've got the blonde underneath and the dark on top. Now, I cut this completely blunt. I actually did this with my clippers. Um, and that way you can sort of sometimes you can be blonde and when your hair blows in the wind or sometimes you can be brown and when your hair blows in the wind you can be blonde awesome okay so this is sort of the traditional way to do it in a lot of the ways that we're seeing in trends right now right but what if you have somebody in your chair who maybe isn't willing to go dark like this or isn't um you know really doesn't like the black and white thing do we have split options for them so i decided to create in the front this guy okay so this is a way more subtle split color okay in the front here again this was a blonde mannequin this was a level uh level nine mannequin when i started 
so this color over here is our color touch six stroke three five one part color to two parts developer this one over here is our new bellini collections uh, our new bellini collection shade uh, color touch nine stroke three five one part color to two parts developer with our 1.9 percent or six of all okay so super super subtle sort of split there um but still really trendy and really pretty okay um so i wanted to make sure that i showed you guys a way that you could do this split color uh in a way that's maybe more consumer friendly than just like a straight sort of black and white you know although as a colorist my heart will always live you know with with these things okay um so that is it for my mannequins today guys i wanted to say thank you again so much uh, for joining me today and for always supporting us at Wella. I know that uh, it's been a hard year. It's been a hard year for us. It's been a hard year for you. But, uh, you know, I hope that you guys, uh, you know, are feeling good these days and are feeling better about um, how things are going in the salon. So again, thank you so much for having me, for, for joining in. Thank you, Wella Canada West, for having me. Um, I wanted to say if you guys want to give me a follow, it would be great if you want to see more of the content uh, that we have coming up. Please give me a follow at Chelsea.Wella. Um, we, you also can see if you go onto my IGTV or onto Wella Canada West IGTV, uh, you guys can see some of the lives that we've done in the past. We have some consultation stuff and some trend stuff and some business stuff. We're really kind of trying to bring as much to you guys as, as we can. If you guys have suggestions for things you'd like to see, uh, going forward, please reach out to us. Don't be afraid to send me a DM. Um, I'm happy to bring to life. Uh, so we've actually done classes before on IGTV that, um, were suggestions from salon. So please reach out to us if you have suggestions for us. Tune in again on Wella Canada West uh, on this Instagram here. Uh, on November 15th, I'm gonna be live with uh, Lauren Wild. Um, and we're gonna be having coffee on a Sunday night, coffee, um, and talking hair and talking trends and talking formulas and it's gonna be really awesome. More information to come on that one. Last but not least, guys, if you guys learned anything today, remember you're not the owner of your knowledge, you're only the caretaker of it. We were all given gifts in this industry that never belong to us and they're only meant for us to pass on to other people. The, the legacy that you leave in this world um, is the way that you shared your knowledge and the way that you can be of service to others. So please serve each other well, be kind to each other. Thank you for tuning in and pay it forward. We'll see you guys soon.